Does my hair look good? I hope so. Hola. So I've been wanting to make... <laughs> so I've been wanting to make an apron for quite some time now. If there's one thing about me is that I'm very messy. I'm very accident prone. I'm always spilling things. I have, I guess what you can say, clumsy hands. I have clumsy hands <laughs> and when it comes to cooking I'm always getting things on my clothes and so a lot of my shirts have these grease stains that I get and I don't want that so I've been really wanting to make aprons so I kind of want some sort of apron collection because I'm constantly doing house chores and I do a lot of cooking. Something that I'm looking for in my aprons is that they need to be usable. I don't want it for decor. I mean I hope it looks good though. I need to be able to throw it in the washing machine. It needs to be easy to clean. It needs to be durable because I'm gonna be using it a lot. I also want it to look cute. So hopefully I can get all of those things with my apron. The pattern I picked out for this apron is the Simplicity 9496, which is this one right here. Uh, Simplicity 9496, it's like a vintage kind of apron. They're all really cute. I want to make this one right here which is number A. The reason I want to do number A is because I was gifted a half apron, but it ties around the waist and so I don't have any kind of bib to protect my chesticle area. So I really need an apron with a bib. Apparently it's uh, easy to sew. We'll see about that. For notions, it's asking for one package of baby rickrack. I have no idea what that is. Help me out, Google. So it's like zigzaggy trim, which is cute. I don't think I have any of that. I'll have to check my stash. I have no clue what I have. So you need a one package of baby rickrack, one package of half inch double wide fold bias tape. I think I have that. I'm not sure if I have the colors that I want, but maybe I can make my own bias tape. We'll see. As for the fabric, since I'm doing apron view A, I'm gonna need two and three fourths yard of 45 inch wide fabric or two yards of 60 inch fabric. Unfortunately, I don't have enough fabric for the fabric I chose. Let me show you. This is the fabric that I want to use. This fabric was given to me, but this is not enough fabric. So I have this bed sheet that I thrifted. And since I don't have enough of this fabric, I figured that the blue on this one kind of matches it a little bit. What I'm gonna try to do is Frankenstein it together to have a contrasting fabric. I don't know how it's gonna work out because I've never done an apron and I don't really sew with patterns. I actually don't really sew at all. And that's why I'm making this video to document my sewing journey and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to get started by ironing my fabric because it's wrinkly and I want this apron to look really good. So here we go. I started off by ironing my fabric, but then I got a little too hot because of the iron. I'm like super sweaty right now uh, because of this sweater. So I'm going to change right now because it's hot. Well, I mean, it's not hot because it's winter, but I'm hot. Okay, so I got my cat shirt on. Woo, kitties. Back to business. So it was not back to business. I actually didn't do anything after that. So I had to come back the next day and cut out my fabric when I realized I didn't have enough. So I had to use my secondary fabric to cut out all my pieces and everything fit nicely. Next, I marked out my fabric and spilled my kombucha all over the floor. So I had to clean that up. I attached my skirt panels together with a French seam and I decided to do the same thing for the bottom ruffle. So I'll, this is me doing that here. Make sure to give your seams a nice press. Here's my skirt and here's my ruffle. I did a long stitch so I can gather it. I gathered my ruffle and attached it to my skirt but I ended up pinching part of the skirt so I had to unpick that part and redo it. I then turned over the bottom of the ruffle twice and sewed it to give it a clean finish, but then this happened. I've been sewing without bobbin for a while now. Gotta wind that shit. So I wound my bobbin and continue to finish the bottom of the ruffle. The ruffle is done. I haven't finished the, I guess, this part where I attached the ruffle. I wanted to bind it, but I don't have 
the right size of bias tape and then I was thinking I would make my own but I don't think I have enough fabric and I also feel like it's gonna take me too long so I might scratch that I might go to Joann or Walmart I don't know buy some bias tape and finish this it just frays so much this fabric's super super focus bitch super fray also i i used white thread instead of a matching thread i didn't have a matching thread and also i don't think it matters because it's an apron that i'm going to be using to clean so it's going to get dirty very fast i don't know why i keep shaking my head so i just i used white thread for it i think it's cute it gives a cute little touch here is the binding for the pockets which i pinned and sewed I sewed the strap for the apron and I couldn't find the strap. I've been looking for it everywhere and it's right there. So I feel stupid because that was like five minutes of searching for the strap that was literally on me. I must be tired or something. So I was tired and I woke up the next day and whipped out my serger. This is my brother's serger. It's the first time I'm using it. And I'm kind of glad that I took it out because it was so easy to finish these edges. Looks pretty good in some areas, but I didn't catch the back and others. I ran the missed part of the seam through the serger again, but I accidentally caught part of the ruffle, so I had to go back and fix that. Next, I finished the side seam of the skirt panel on both sides. I lost the footage of me doing the bib, but what I did was I sandwiched the straps between the facing and the outer fabric, and I also added a little lacing between. I sewed all the way around, leaving the bottom open, and I turned it inside out. I then pressed it. You could kind of see what I did, but sorry I lost the footage. Okay, the instructions say to pin the right sides of the waistband to the wrong side of the apron, and I matched all the notches. I gathered it to fit. I'm going to stitch, and then I'm gonna press it towards the waistband, turning the waistband up. That doesn't make sense, does it? We'll see. Okay, yeah, I don't know if I messed up, because it says pin right side of the waistband to the wrong side of the apron, but, so this isn't the right side of my apron, but if I stitch it and then pull it up, then, I think I, I think I did this wrong, yeah. Because if I would do it the other way, then it would be the wrong side to the wrong side. So I'm a little confused. I'm gonna do wrong side to wrong side and see how, how that works out for me. Okay, that looks like it makes a little bit more sense because this is my, my right side right here. So that would make this side the wrong side. So I think this makes more sense. Since I did that, I'm going to so, and then I'm going to do this and then do that. So I'll be back. I slightly gathered my waist ties and basted it onto my waistband. And I pressed the waistband about a quarter inch in so that I could fold it over and hide my raw edges. Next, I tried it on and Try to figure out the placement of the shoulder straps so that they were secure because I would have to sew them on. But first I had to finish the ends of my waist ties by hand sewing them closed. Finally, I sewed all around the edges of the waistband to secure everything down. I accidentally caught something again. This time it was the bib and it created like this little pocket loop so I unpicked that and I had to re-stitch it down and now it looks really nice look at that so clean I gave my apron one last press and I was done
Mama Zahl. Ta-da! I think this apron came out so freaking cute. I'm very happy with it. I kind of don't want to use it because I don't want to get it dirty, but I made this to be a utility apron that I was going to use when cleaning. So I guess it's fine if it gets dirty. I can just make another one. This wasn't supposed to be like a accessory. Ex accessory. I just wanted something that was going to look cute and be functional for whenever I'm doing chores around the house. Some of the things that I liked about this apron were the color schemes. I really like how this blue right here matched. I think the colors go really well together. I also think this lace up here was a cute touch. I wish I would have made it shorter because it got stuck in the seam allowance on both sides so it's it's a little curved but overall it looks really nice. I like the length of the apron. I think it's the perfect length. Also the pattern was really easy to follow. I think it's a good pattern for beginners. The instructions are pretty clear. Yeah I think even a beginner can do this. Well I'm a beginner so. <laughs> I think I would definitely make this apron again but with some changes to it but I think I would use this pattern again as a I guess like a base pattern. Mm -hmm. Some things I didn't like about this apron were the pocket placements. I think they were too close to the center. So it's like, I don't know, it's really awkward to put my hands right here. I, I would definitely like to put my hands to the side. However, this apron pattern only called for one pocket and I decided to put two pockets. So maybe with one pocket it would have been okay. But yeah, I would have definitely moved the pockets more side, but I didn't know. I just changed it up. For me, it's fine. It's fine. It's not a, it's not a problem. <laughs> If anything, I would have loved some side pocket on this apron. That would have been great. Also, I'm I'm not too crazy about the shoulder straps, how they're placed. I feel like it comes too close to my side and it should be more back. But I also think maybe it's because I have a larger waist circumference. That's the reason why it's sitting closer to my side because if my waist was smaller. It would be closer to the back if you get what I mean. Yeah. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yeah, but the problem I was having was when I was making it, when I would stand up relax like this, the strap in the back right here, it was like sagging or it was kind of like too loose. So I had to really tighten it. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Freaking Siri scared the crap out of me. Stop it. Fuck, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, when I would be relaxed, it was really loose. So I had to pin the placement tightly so that I could sew it on. I kind of wish it was one of those crisscross aprons that have like the adjustable loop where you put the straps in. They cross and they go into the loops. I think that would have been a little more comfortable. Kind of don't like that. Kind of wish it was more adjustable or easier to adjust. Yeah, so that's it. I hope that this video was helpful to somebody in the world. I know it wasn't a tutorial. It was more like a come sew with me kind of thing or yeah, like a sewing vlog. I don't know. I just wanted to make a video of this because when I was looking for a video on YouTube, I couldn't find a single one. So I was like, well, why don't I make this? Maybe this will help someone out there. If you're out there, I hope this helps. <laughs> cool. That's it. Toodles. Bye.